Jesus. Here by convening the meeting of the Board of Education, everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Brennan. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve the minutes of July 19, 2007. Second. President Garcia. It's been moved and set and properly second. Uh, any corrections, uh, Commissioner Elliott? Uh, yes, I was not um, at the uh, last board meeting, but I did read the minutes. <clears throat> and in, the, um, uh, in Dr. Kayla's remarks, where it discusses that he uh, attended an anti-racism meeting. I think we need to specify what organization uh, that meeting uh, he had, that meeting was. Uh, that that needs to be stipulated in the um, in the minutes. The reason that I think we need to be specific about this is because because these documents are for posterity, for historical purposes. And we need to make sure that we have as specific information in the uh, minutes as possible. So did you, I know you were talking, but did you hear what I was saying, Linda? Okay. And then also in reference to um, uh, the, the last statement where uh, I, I, I would imagine that Dr. Kayla had uh, introduced some administrators. Uh, my concern about that is, um, 
until we vote on them, they're not officially administrators, and the wording should probably be that there are candidates for, uh, to be, administrations, uh, be, be administrators, excuse me. So some language to that effect is what we should use um, to make sure that we are uh, doing the business of the school district with integrity. Uh, Dr. Keller, what's the name of the organization mentioned? Uh, it's Anti-Racism Movement, uh, better known as ARM, A-R-M. Uh, are there anyone opposed to those two amendments to the minute? None. Uh, any other corrections to the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> We will move on then to um, speakers addressing an agenda item. And we have, we have a number of speakers, so please, uh, I urge all of those who are going to speak to follow uh, the three minutes uh, that we have allocated for each speaker. And as soon as you hear the bell rings, please conclude your remarks. The first speaker is Tiffany Young, uh, followed by Clara Bromat. Tiffany Young. Is Ms. Young here? Is Ms. Bromat here? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Clara Bromat, and I am the, uh, well, not a parent, grandparent and great pet grandparent of children that attend Rochester City School, Rochester City Schools. And um, I'm here with the um, delegation from the CAFE. And one of the things that our CAFE meeting that was discussed is that, and they're trying to encourage parent involvement, uh, active involvement. And um, at one of the meetings we were told that parents would have I'm talking about the code, of, the code of Conduct, that parents would have an active part in reviewing and having input into it. And I have the new 2007-2008 uh, calendar, and the rules are already in there. So I guess I'm, I've, I missed the train again. But as a grandparent, I would like to have my input. Um, most of the rules and regulations seem ordinary. What I don't see here is um, what happens when a child comes not dressed appropriately. What happens? Are uh, the parents notified? Is the child just, is the school door opened up and the child just said, go home and change clothes? There's no order in what parents must do, what the child must do, and what the staff must do. Um, some of the things here, especially the violence, um, I have a grandson that is going to be a senior this year. And throughout his high school um, grades, there was always someone fighting. There was always someone arguing. Um, and nine out of ten times, if he got into an argument, um, if he was suspended, you know, first thing I'm going to know is what happened. And he said, Grandma, it wasn't me. The boy jumped on me. The boy took my pencil. The boy took my, or they said something about me, and I retaliated. Um, I corrected it by merely saying, I'm sending you to get an education. I'm not asking him to back down, but I'm asking him to find alternatives. But there are some children that aren't looking for alternatives. And what recourse in these code of conducts do us parents have, or grandparents have? Um, there's always the option of having a teacher or a personnel from, from school call. But that's not always an option. Um, I'm involved in the community, so there are times when I'm not glued to my phone. Um, there are times when I need to get a message to my child. And whenever I call, it depends on who I'm talking to. Well, we can't take the message to him or he can't come to the phone. There's always an obstacle until I say, must I come to the school? And, you know, then you get a change of mindset. The other things is that if this is supposed to be 
Yeah, involve your, people. your three minutes are us. Will you All please right. conclude? Um, if it's supposed to be parent involvement and you want parents' input, there needed to be an appropriate time for us to do that. And I'm, like everything else, we want parent involvement, but we don't know how to get it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next person is uh, Mildred Eady and Rosemary Rivera. I see everybody doing all right. My name is Mildred Edie, and by the grace of God, I have helped to raise three generations. I lived it through the time when races was in your face and balance. Today I live in a very confused time when we say that racism is being eliminated. Yet our institution wait until the year 2007 to decide to create it African American Studies Department. It is long overdue. My only hope is that it will be done right in a way that will include parents and even grandparents. For as long as our children has been exposed to leaders of our nation that they cannot relate to, I am hoping that by giving them leaders that they can relate to not only in the books but in the teachers. That perhaps we can keep your children in school and off the streets. Let's look at the fact that we need more African-American role models teaching our children. We need to make sure that teachers are trained to deal with our culture, no matter what race they are. The fact is that most of the children in this district, they are black. So what works for one country doesn't always work for another. I hope this department, let me say this again, I hope this department will keep that in mind and God bless them in taking this first step because we have miles to go before we sleep. God bless you. <clears throat> Miss, Miss. Hold on a second, please. Rosemary Rivera. <laughs> Tiffany Young. As a student at Franklin High School, I want to say yes in favor of an African African American Studies Department. And yes to a public process to choose our next superintendent. There's so much content missing regarding the history of my ancestors and their contribution that it's misshapes our understanding of who we really are and what we are capable of being. Our schools are in crisis and we, we need urgent attention to the problems. Kathleen Fisher. Next speaker will be after Kathleen Clianda Florence. Good evening, my name is Kathleen Benedetti Fisher. I'm a former city school student and an experienced secondary school teacher. While the 39% graduation rate clarifies that our district is in crisis, we all would have different opinions about which part of the team is more to blame, leadership, administration, faculty, parents, and the students themselves. But part of our crisis is inherited, an inequitable system which renders all parts of the team ineffective despite exhaustive effort. We must take responsibility to disinherit ourselves. How? Our district has a rare opportunity. 
We have a well-informed, committed group of professionals, parents, teachers, community members, and students asking the district to examine what race and inherited racism has to do with our crisis. Their proposal, an African, African American Affairs Department. If the district is committed to equity, it cannot be afraid of strengthening supports to minorities. Beyond more multicultural curriculum, a department of experienced professional advocates for racial equity that reaches and has power across the district. This would be a beacon of light to uninspired students and to well-intentioned, committed, hardworking, but sometimes ineffective faculty and administration. An African American Affairs Department could be a bridge for reticent parents, a source of support for students, teachers, and administration, an educational resource and an information hub for students, teachers, and administration. An African, African American Affairs Department could be a visible commitment to equity that would invite deeper investment. It would be a visible means of strengthening the district's conscience. And it could be a training resource that would broaden awareness of how to be a racial ally. More than a multicultural workshop is needed if the district truly intends to model shared power and empowerment. An example of shared power is the only example that will inspire students to believe the educational system is truly there to serve them. Thank you. Following Ms. Florence will be Myra Brown. <clears throat> Jambo, which means hello in Swahili. I imagine that a good number of you on the board or in the audience did not know what that meant. It is imperative that the children in the Rochester City School District have a quality educational foundation of the richness of African peoples, their culture, and contributions. For over 40 years, this district has been feeding our children a watered-down curriculum that does not challenge them to become critical and analytical thinkers. African American studies is not only for students, but the staff in the district. Teachers and other professionals in the district must better equip themselves in order to be effective in urban education. The time has run out on our watches and our children's watches while you play political chess and using our children as pawns. We are calling checkmates. People feared Martin Luther King Jr. because he taught people how to be dreamers. They feared Malcolm X because he taught people to be thinkers, ask questions, and to take a stand by any means necessary. They feared Marcus Garvey because he wanted our people to go right back to being the kings and queens that we are. No longer will we sit back idly allowing the district to produce a pedagogy that oppresses children, parents, and the community. We are demanding a change. We are holding you accountable because without you, there will be, without us, there will be no you. As the famous writer, rapper, and actor Tupac Shakur has stated, no matter how much concrete you may try to lay in our way of our children and their parents for selfish political gain, a rose will go through the concrete either with or without your support. A famous key Swahili proverb states, haba na haba kubaja ki baba, meaning little by little, you feel the measure of the mind. This is the goal for our children, not the pipeline to prison, not a transparent education, not unqualified teachers and administrators, not high dropout rates, not high teen pregnancy rates. We are no longer knocking on the door politely asking you for a change. We are kicking it in and demanding what is needed for to reclaim our children, our precious pearls. Thank you. Following Ms. Brown would be Howard Eagle. Hi, my name is Myra Brown, and as one of the organizational heads of an organization called ARM, which is Rochester's anti-racism movement that's committed to dismantling systemic and institutionalized racism in all of its forms. Uh, we believe that what is really needed um, is an African-African-Americans Affairs Department. 
We support this African African Americans curriculum, but we believe that it should sit under an affairs department which would look at addressing the broader scope of institutionalized racism that continues to impact our parents, our educators, and our children. Their sense of self, their sense of self-worth, and their sense of accomplishment. It is arms hope that this African African American Studies Department, when it rolls out, that it will become clear that it cannot stand alone to address the more systemic issues of race and racism, evidenced by devaluation, distortion, the misuse of economic and institutional power, defined cultural norms, otherization of our children, internalized racial superiority and oppression. I'm like to commend Commissioner White and the members of this board for bringing forth a long overdue aspect of our education. Scientists have helped us to know that the human origin began in Africa. And so when we talk about African and African American studies, we're talking about our collective human history. We should not be afraid or ashamed to lift up the place and the story of our human birth. I'm excited about its materializing, and ARM looks forward to being part of in, being involved in its rolling out of this process. And we thank you so very much for it being on the agenda tonight. Following Mr. Eagle will be Laurie Thomas. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm listed on the Sheet as a staff person. I, I guess I can't get away from that label, but I'm speaking as a member of ARM this evening. Uh, we'd like to publicly thank uh, Commissioner White for introducing a version of um, the Africa, the original concept of a Department of African and African American Affairs. Uh, we think that it, we support his resolution. We think that it represents a positive and important step in the right direction. And uh, we look forward to continuing to work with Commissioner White and others who are involved in this effort. We think that it's critical to continue to create opportunities for parents and community to have input into the process as it unfolds. Um, also, we want to thank Dr. Keller publicly for the for the outstanding, courageous, bold, <laughs> committed leadership that he's been displaying. And uh, we were uh, uh, sorry, we regret hearing that apparently you're not interested in the permanent uh, superintendent's position. But then we're encouraged by the fact that apparently whomever the permanent person is, that person will see, receive his or her orientation under Dr. Keller's guidance. And so that's still good. Uh, and we do want to express that uh, we are not necessarily in agreement with those who have been saying that one candidate in particular, in terms of the finalists, uh, does not have the right kind of experience to lead this district. Based on our extensive research and information, we're convinced that perhaps this person has exactly the right kind of experience, the right kind of knowledge, the right kind of commitment to continue the high standard that Dr. Keller has clearly set in terms of leadership in this uh, community. Uh, and so we look for, and we thank the board, at least the majority of the board, hopefully all of the board, for creating the opportunity for us to engage the finalists in discussion. We really, that's very, very important. And so we also look forward to being a part of that process. Thank you. I have a written statement that I'd like to uh, submit to be uh, introduced into the record of this evening's meeting. Thank you. Ms. Thomas. Good evening. Um, I went on the website because uh, I called in to see what was on the agenda tonight to speak to it. And I was told that the Code of Ethics was on the agenda. And I read the Code of Ethics Policies 2160 school district officer and employee code of ethics. Officers and employees of the Rochester City School District shall hold their positions to serve and benefit the public and not for personal gain or advantage. The Board of Education recognizes that in order to implement this fundamental principle, there is a need for a clear and reasonable standards of ethical conduct. This code of conduct establishes such standards by defining and prohibiting acts of incompatible 
that are incompatible with public interest. It was said that the board was impressed by candidate Purcell's record on improving attendance, narrowing achievement gap between black and white students, and overseeing a facilities modernization plan. However, these qualifications did not meet one of the top 10 items produced by the survey offered to the community by the district for which we paid handsomely. In fact, increasing attendance never made the list. Reducing the achievement gap was 18th on the list, and experience with business financial management of complex organization was 24th on the list. The qualifications of Mr. Maines brings to the table are principal of a school with a population of approximately 600 students city council member, and mayoral candidate. Unfortunately, not one of these qualifications made the list either. While I hold no malice toward either candidates, I do believe that after $160,000 and many months conducting a nationwide search for candidates, there had to have been at least one individual more qualified or one that met at least one of the top 10 criterion generated by the community survey. I would think that a qualified search firm utilizing $160,000 of taxpayer monies could produce a list of candidates that came close to matching at the very least half of the top 10 qualities an ideal superintendent as defined by the surveys completed by members of this community. While I understand that the qualifications ranked in the survey provided to the community by the search firm as part of the $160,000 they were paid should not be the only criteria by which to choose a superintendent. I would hope that the Board of Education, after paying $160,000 to a search firm to compile a list of qualified candidates, would at least consider the survey results as part of their determination as to whom would be best qualified to be this district's next superintendent. I feel it necessary to ask Commissioner Evans, excuse me, Evans, Chair of the Superintendent Search Committee, if the information gathered by the survey was even considered by the search firm as a guide in the selection process. If not, then why did we pay the search firm $160,000 since part of contract price was to create, conduct, compile the findings of, from a community conclude, survey? Please, I will. Thank you. Shouldn't the contract be amended and the price reduced for failure to utilize aspects gathered by the survey as part of the determination process? Given the board, given the history of board decisions concerning choice of superintendent, it may be prudent for the search committee and the board to enlist the aid of Rochester citizens in their selection process. We are an intelligent, informed, and integral part of this community. Don't shut us out. Embrace our willingness to Thank be involved. You. Thank you. We'll move on with uh, super, the superintendent's report, uh, Dr. Kala. <clears throat> the, uh, I want to talk about the Oren T. Shapiro Award. Uh, this award, established 20 years ago, is given each year by Sanford Shapiro in memory of his son. The award inspires teachers to engage 11th and 12th grade students in the writing of creative and expository pieces. Entries are turned into uh, the Director of English and a panel of district English teachers serve as judges to narrow the entries to four finalists in each category. These eight pieces are then sent to Mr. Shapiro who has a panel of his own judges review the entries to select one winner in each category. The winning students each receive a check for $1,000 and each of their teachers receives a check for $500. The students cannot attend this evening, but their teachers will accept the awards on their behalf. And to introduce the names uh, of the teachers, uh, or of the students and the teachers, uh, I'd like to introduce Connie Leach to come forward. Secondary Director of ELA, thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for this opportunity to acknowledge students who not only won the award, but who uh, wrote entries for the award. We have many students out there who gave the very best for this award, and as Dr. Kayla said, um, this is the 19th annual Oren T. Shapiro Award. It's in, in memorial of Sanford Shapiro's son, and he has given this award to our district only, 
uh, as a memorial to his son, and we are very, very honored that he has done so. We're going on 20 years. Um, we have two uh, student winners. We did contact them. I'm not sure they're here this evening. The winner of the creative writing piece was um, Julia Peruccio. Is she here tonight? She thought she might be able to attend. Julia? No, the students, no. students aren't here. I don't think the students are here. Okay, tonight. I did call. Okay. Right. And, the, um, and uh, her teacher was Marcy Gamzen. And for the expository writing piece, it was Emily Cornish. And representing SODA, both students were from School of the Arts, is Mr. Uh, Brad Craddock, who will take these plaques back to SODA with him. Thank you. Thanks, Kenny. Um, I've been uh, appointed uh, to the uh, Governor Spitzer's uh, Children's Cabinet, the Advisory Board, and um, it's, uh, I'm, I'm uh, flattered with the honor. Uh, it's a lot of work. I spent the day there yesterday. And there are two um, major focal points of, of the Advisory Cabinet. And uh, it's a cabinet uh, that is made up of about 35 individuals from across the state. It's chaired by Jeffrey Canada from the Harlem Children's Zone. And those two focal points are making sure that we get kids enrolled in pre-K and that all children have health care. So um, uh, I, am, uh, I consider myself the pre-K poster child. Uh, someone who is going to make sure that we get as many kids into pre-K as we possibly can. So this is a very appropriate group for us. Um, so uh, I am working very, very diligently uh, with uh, members of our own community, uh, with uh, a subgroup of the Educational Leadership Council, which is uh, uh, a group put together by the mayor. And we are working to get uh, in the next couple of weeks, about 70 additional children into pre-K who were not enrolled in pre-K. There are two major obstacles with uh, getting kids into pre-K, and that's transportation and child care. And uh, in the Children's Cabinet, we're working on trying to solve those problems uh, by getting transportation aid uh, for the transportation and, and get the appropriate legislation that handles that and also uh, working to uh, 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 get all of the health care programs in the state uh, available. As uh, many people know, that, the, uh, there, that has, all of the health care programs for children have been expanded in this budget, and it's going to be a chore uh, to get people aware of what, the, uh, uh, what these programs are and that we make sure that we get them involved. And the child care, child care is critical uh, to uh, parents in order to get their kids involved in pre-K because pre-K is a half day and they need the child care for the other half day. Uh, one other issue that I'd uh, like to at least bring to the board's attention is that New York State School Boards Association is looking for input uh, for No Child Left Behind. Uh, it's national reauthorization and it would seem appropriate that uh, a school district as uh, large as Rochester should, should make uh, their voices heard uh, so that the legislation, when reauthorized, reflects our needs and not the needs of some other area. You uh, received these uh, little green booklets, and they have sample letters in here, and uh, it would be good if we, as a board, uh, make a united front and, and, uh, and uh, put our opinion forward so that uh, the legislation is reauthorized in a way that works for our children. Um, the last point is, uh, uh, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was last board meeting, but perhaps two board meetings ago, we were to have a presentation by the uh, Native American Resource Center. Uh, but I, we, are we, uh, Perry, are we in business this time? No. Okay. Uh, the Native American Resource Center in operation since 1974 provides an after-school program for Native American students in grades K through 12. This program provides instruction in the cultural heritage, including arts and crafts, and is also it, uh, contains a strong parent involvement component. Uh, I'd like to introduce Perry, uh, Perry Ground, who's the project coordinator for the uh, Native American Resource Center, and I think he has a, a, a very uh, pleasing uh, a presentation for you. I, I hope so. Thank you, Dr. Kala. <laughs> I'll invite the members of the board, Dr. Kala, maybe to come down front, because we do have a PowerPoint presentation. And I'll ask the clerk, please, to lower the screen.
Okay, we're off to a rousing start already. So. Again, I'd like to thank uh, President Garcia, members of the board, Dr. Kala, for inviting us back again to make this presentation. I do apologize again about our technical difficulties. Two months ago it was, actually, um, but I'm glad that we're able to come back and share this information with you. The Native American Resource Center, as Dr. Kala mentioned, has been part of the Rochester City School District for more than 30 years, and we do teach Native American students and non-Native American students about the importance of the history, culture, and contributions made by Native American people throughout history. This past year, our students were able to participate in a very exciting uh, and once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to attend a program called the Virtual Museum Workshop that was offered by the National Museum of the American Indian, which is part of the Smithsonian Institute. As I learned in college, I always tell people what we're going to talk about. So this is what we're going to talk about tonight. What is the Resource Center? What is the Virtual Museums Workshop? We'll see some examples of students' work uh, and then some future projects that we are doing to build off of what we learned this year down at the Smithsonian. I do have two students with me tonight that I'll introduce. Chandra Martinez, who is working our computer right now, is about to be a seventh grader at Wilson Academy. And Paula Plaza, who is standing to my left, will be an eighth grader at John Marshall High School later this year. Next slide. Don't forget the pictures. OK. I did mention uh, these three points uh, two months ago uh, while we were trying to stall for time and fix our technical issues. Uh, but our mission at the Resource Center is threefold. We want to provide uh, standards-based cultural education and enrichment for our Native American students who attend schools here in the Rochester area. We know that there are more than 200 Native American students attending school in the Rochester district right now, and we provide services to them to teach them about who they are as Native American people. Uh, through our weekly classes and by using our community resources, we bring in guest speakers and design projects and a curriculum that helps to support what they are doing in their everyday classrooms, as well as teach them about their own cultural heritage. Uh, the second part of our mission is to support them in their academic efforts. Everything that we are doing is pointing them towards going to college when they complete their studies here in Rochester. When I started in this program five years ago, and I asked all of our students how many of them planned on going to college, not one of them raised their hand. And now our students, if we were to ask them the same question, all of them would raise their hand. We do maintain extensive college and scholarship files to help all of our students plan for their uh, secondary or post-secondary education. The other thing that has been most successful for us is to act as a resource for non-native students and educators throughout the district. We have three different outreach programs. We provide more than 150 programs each year serving at least 3,000 students annually to teach them about the history and culture of Native American people. We work predominantly with fourth and fifth graders, helping them to prepare for the fifth grade state assessment in social studies. But in this coming year and in future years, uh, my supervisor and I have developed some plans to also make sure that we help the seventh and eighth graders, because currently the eighth grade students are not passing their social studies assessment anywhere near levels that we would want them to be passing at. We know that through some of our efforts, we've helped to raise the achievement level on the fifth grade social studies test. We hope to uh, repeat that with the eighth graders. Also, we do hope to very soon be part of the Destiny Library system so that every single student and educator in the district will be able to utilize the resources that we hold at the Native American Resource Center located within school number 19, and that we would uh, send those materials around the district so that other students and educators could use them in their classrooms. Next slide. So what is the Virtual Museum Workshop? Again, as I mentioned, it's offered by the Smithsonian through the National Museum of the American Indian. This is the final Smithsonian Institute built on the mall. It is, in fact, the closest museum to the uh, Capitol building. Um, and they also have a facility in New York City. The goal of the program is to get students interacting with the museum collection and learning how to use digital technology to record and preserve information about their cultural heritage by having a tangible connection to this collection. Our students were able to see items made by their ancestors. In some cases, it was a direct connection. 
I saw items that were made by my great uncle. He's a painter named Ernie Smith. He has many items here in the Rochester Museum and Science Center. And I was able to see over 30 paintings that no one in my family has seen for more than 40 years. I was the first member of my family to be able to touch them again since he painted them and uh, they were purchased by the museum. Some of our students were able to see materials made by members of their tribe. Uh, and there are some examples here that we see in the, uh, in the photographs. The students were taking uh, digital photographs, as we see in the top picture. Uh, and what they were using was QuickTime virtual reality. So we're trying to blend together the idea of using modern technology to preserve something that is an important part of our cultural heritage by photographing and preserving images of these objects. Some of these objects have been in the collections for hundreds, of, uh, over 100 years. And some of them are hundreds of years old and have not been seen or touched, except for when they were moved from New York City to just outside of Washington, D.C. just a few years ago. Many of them have never been exhibited or are unable to be exhibited because they are so fragile. So this will be the only place that people will be able to see them. In our outcome, which will be in a virtual exhibition featured on the website of the museum and hopefully here on the district website as well. Next slide. So the Virtual Museum Workshop, I learned about this program three years ago attending the uh, National Indian Education Association Conference. Uh, this is a conference that through my position I am somewhat required to go to each year. Uh, and we uh, talk about the state of Native American education around the entire country. Uh, this program is uh, very specifically for Native American students, although they are using it as a model for the new African American Museum, which will be part of the Smithsonian and will be opening in the next few years. And some of the other museums that are part of that institute are taking this program uh, and, and building, mo uh, building programs based on this model. Uh, we did apply a few times. And two years ago, it says last year, but it's really two years ago, uh, our application was rejected, more because of finances than anything else. But our application last June was accepted. We were one of only two schools in the entire country accepted for this previous year's program. Uh, and again, there's an example of some of the work that we were able to see. And again, why participate? And this is actually Chandra, who is holding this box uh, in the photograph. This connected the students. They were able to touch, handle, and experience the objects that are in the Smithsonian's collection. We were in the back rooms that most people are not allowed to go in. And except for this program, no one under the age of 18 is allowed to visit the collection areas that we visited. So for us to be able to handle these objects, to be able to photograph them like we see in the lower picture, a once in a lifetime opportunity. We do hope to introduce them to how to use the technology, as I said, uh, for uh, positive outcomes and hopefully introduce some career choices to them. Next slide. I'll let Paula talk just a little bit about some of our preparation for going to this program. During the preparation, we had to take two. During the preparation, we had to take two tests, and we took them more than one time. If you did not pass the first time, we took one on safe handling the objects as actual touching objects we have in our own classroom and holding them, so we didn't break them. And the other test was about respecting the object. And we had to fill out object surveys during this. And we had to pick out of how many? I think I'm going too far. In the surveys, we had to choose a theme. Mine was jewelry. And we um, had to um, pick 500. Out of 500 items, we had to pick 20 items that went with our theme. And then we ended up narrowing it down to seven. Good. Yes, these students had to come to our class each week. There was a two-hour class. And throughout the school year leading up to our trip in April, they did have to learn about how to use uh, digital cameras. They had to learn about QuickTime virtual reality. And as much as they hated it, I taught them how to be a museum worker to collect data about an object, how to record data about an object, how to safely handle the objects, how to move the objects, 
um, and items that I knew that they would need once we got to Washington. A complement to what we did uh, or that we received uh, because of what we did, there were at least six members of the NMAI staff, that's the shorthand for National Museum of the American Indian, uh, the NMAI staff commented that our students were better prepared to handle the museum objects than anyone that had been in the museum before, whether they were students who participated or they were professional researchers who were coming in to use the collection. So our students were very well prepared. Also, the director of the program took copies of all of the pages that I use, such as the planning uh, object surveys and our planning pages, and he is going to incorporate those so all students in the future will use the model that I created for our students to use so that they will be better prepared. Uh, also, and we'll see this in a future slide, we completed more work while we were in Washington than any other group that had participated in this program before by at least 50%. We took ob uh, photographs of 46 objects. The most prior to us was 30 objects over the five days. Uh, we did visit one of our local collections and the staff at the Rochester Museum and Science Center did a fantastic job helping to prepare our students. Uh, and as Paula mentioned, we did receive photographs of over 5,000 objects that the students had to filter through, often on their own time. We had disks that we sent them home or to school with and they had to look through each photograph to decide which ones they would want to work with when we arrived in Washington, D.C. And then the planning pages, again, that was for the research collecting information such as the object number, the artist, the tribe that it came from, the date that it was collected or made, and a number of other pieces of, of information. Next slide, please. Actually, I'm going to ask Chandra to come up and talk about our trip to Washington. Paula will take over there. We went to the, um, we had went to Washington, D.C. Uh, over We went to Washington, D.C. over spring break, and we had to work at the Culture Center and 9 through 325. We're near a regular school day. Um, we had to ride in a Smithsonian shuttle with other employees of the museum. We photographed our selected objects that we chose off of the computer. We completed 46 objects, and we had to do research on each object and write essays about each one to perform our own voice for the pieces. Yes, one of the things that was very interesting, one of the staff members of the museum encouraged the students, he told them, he said, these objects can't speak for themselves. You need to be the voice for this object. So the research that they did and the information that they gathered and the text that they wrote will speak for these objects, many of which have been before, will never be exhibited in the real world. They will only be exhibited virtual exhibit that we are still creating. Also, many of the students had never flown before. Five of the six students got to experience an airplane for the first time. And there was much scream and crying and gnashing of teeth and pulling of hair. But we, they were treated very much like employees. They were given ID badges that they had to wear all week. And we did have to ride the shuttle, sign in and sign out. The same as an employee of Sony would have to do during the course of their, of their work. We do have some examples of work. I'll ask Paul to come back up here and I'll offer you here for them. And they can tell you a little bit about the work. This is, this is my page, and um, there's the essay 
on the one side, on the right side, and on the left side, there's a video using QuickTime, flat, I mean flash, and you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can get really close. And but what you guys may not notice, these were um, too um, old for me to touch, and they're in a plastic bag. And that's it. <laughs> Those are wampum beads. That before they were, it was they were used before silver and glass beads. This is my page, and um, this shows a picture of a very old um, skirt that, was, that cannot be displayed because of how old it is, and if it's displayed, most of it will rot away. And if you zoom in more, you could find that the beads are kind of decaying and breaking off, and the silk that's around it is also turn, changing colors, and there's holes that bugs bit into for the skirt being so old. This is um, another object, but this is used quick time on a turntable, so you can get all 360 degrees of the object that we had to take 36 um, pictures, each of 10 degrees. And you could also spin it around to see where it was latched together and all the different designs. And if you could also zoom in here to see what was carved in and what was carved out of the metal. This one's also using a quick time video, but instead of going 360 degrees all the way around, mine only went 180 because it wasn't able to stand up by itself and we had to make a little thing for it, a little prop so it can stay on the turntable. And it can only go 180 degrees, but you can also zoom in and see the texture in the metal of the airing. And if he turns to the right side, you can also see the latches on the earring.
went to visit the Museum of Airplanes, and then we got to see the museum of where we got to see um, artifacts of dinosaurs in the yeah the natural history. And then, what else? Oh, and then we went to see the National Archives. We saw the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution. Then, oh, and we went to the National Zoo. We saw pandas that are very rare to see in our country. And then we walked a lot. Yes, the students loved how much we walked. If any of you have been to Washington, you know you walk a lot. Also, each of them got to ride uh, the metro for the first time. None of them had ever been on a subway before. So they, uh, they had many life experiences. Next slide, please. We do have to say thank you to a, a number of people that helped to make this project uh, possible. There are many departments and staff members in various departments here in the district that went above and beyond their regular duties to help make sure that this project was a success for us, whether it was budget or grants or purchasing or accounting. Uh, they made sure that the money was secured for us uh, because all of the money for this project came from the Smithsonian. Uh, not one dollar of local money was used for this program. Part of uh, obtaining this uh, grant uh, or being selected for this program uh, was that uh, they paid for it entirely. In fact, they're very disappointed with me for not spending enough money. Uh, but I'm figuring out ways to spend more money, don't worry, and uh, we'll get some more of their dollars in the coming years. Uh, you can see the people up here. Uh, uh, our uh, supervisor, uh, director of social studies, Paul Lampe, was instrumental in making this happen. And also I have to say thank you to the parents and the students because it was the parents who really encouraged their students to go with us, uh, and the students gave up their spring break to go and, and work eight hours a day. Um, not only did they work while we were in the uh, museum, uh, each day at the end of the day we would have at least a two-hour planning meeting and they had to tell me something that they had learned that day and something that they hoped to accomplish the next day. So they truly uh, were employees of the museum for a one-week period. Next slide, please. We do have some plans to build off of this. The Rochester Museum and Science Center has already invited us to uh, be part of this project that they are undertaking in this coming year. They are hoping to photograph at least 200 objects in their collection, all made by Native Americans. Uh, two weeks from now is my first meeting to get that set up, I believe. Uh, but the students uh, that went with us to Washington and some other students will be working on this project with them. Uh, we do hope to make a, a book of uh, our Native community members in 2009, and the students will be doing research on the families who live here in the Rochester area so that everyone and get to know who the Native people are around here. Presentations such as this, and there are a number of people that have already invited us, including NMAI in New York City. So some of these students will be having to go with me down to New York City, and maybe they'll get to ride the subway again when we go there. Okay? Um, and you can see some of the other locations that, uh, that have asked us to make presentations. And I do hope that this will lead uh, to some museum internships for some of our students, because many of them became very interested in doing this type of work. Uh, connecting their culture with their education. Uh, and that is one of my goals for this program. Next slide. Just wanted to say thank you. And this is our entire group that went with us, including the two students that are here with me tonight and the two chaperones that went with us and gave up seven days of their lives to spend with us as well. And this is a picture from inside the, uh, inside the museum. So thank you very much for having us here and uh, giving us this opportunity to share this with you. My report is complete. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, and thank you for all the presenters.
Um, we are going to move President on. President Garcia, I have a couple of questions of the superintendent, if I may. Yes, certainly. Um, uh, Dr. Kale, I just want to congratulate you on your appointment to the um, Governor's Committee with respect to pre-K. One of the things I would hope, uh, one of the issues that I hope that you would push for us is a full day pre-K. Absolutely. Uh, because that certainly is a huge issue for a number of our parents to, um, that will prevent them or tends to prevent our parents from uh, enrolling their children in pre-K programs. We really need to have full pre, uh, full day pre-K services. And of course, we know how successful the pre-K program has been. Um, another question I would have in reference to the Native American program, and I would just like to thank uh, the um, presenters uh, for the program, uh, for the presentation. One question I have is, what's the graduation rate of our Native American students? Is that information available? What's last year's graduation rate, or what's the average over the 30 years that we've had this program, uh, the graduation rate of our Af uh, Native American students? And then uh, lastly, and that, if, if that information is not available, uh, if Dr. Kayla, you can have your staff to provide that for me. And then lastly, you know, we know that Christopher Columbus did not discover America. And so my concern is, is that we have textbooks that uh, truthfully, truthfully reflect um, what uh, our American history is. And I've talked about this in reference to the social studies textbooks uh, with the smiling slaves that we just purchased, that the board approved. Uh, but I'm hoping that we're going to, uh, since we spend an enormous amount of money on textbooks, that we as the district would influence this process by saying, unless you change it and make this if the, the history truthful, we're not buying your textbooks. So thank you. This one? No, President Garcia. Fine. No problem. Uh, Commissioner Thompson. I uh, see the memo from Dr. Kalla regarding resolutions. I had a question about that, unless we want to hold the question until we actually begin voting on the resolutions. I, I would rather hold the question until we start on the resolutions. Okay, then the only thing I'd like to do is really give my thanks to uh, Perry Ground and the students for that presentation. Uh, it was several months ago that I visited the Native American Resource Center and got a chance to see the students in action. And uh, that kind of presentation, listening to what they did in preparation, what they did on the visit, the compliments that they received on their conduct and their work, really just makes us proud. And it's the kind of pride that we feel every time we have a chance to share amongst ourselves and with the community what our students do, whether it's the students who visited Louisiana and worked to rebuild homes and dwellings during their school break, or whether it's the students who win the uh, state championship in football. Um, we've got a lot to be proud of in Rochester. And the work that's being done in the Native American Resource Center is just the one of the reasons why we're so determined to do the African and African American um, department here, because it's important for all of our students to understand their history, their culture, and how it fits into the larger scheme. So thank you very much for your work, Perry. Anybody else? Fine. Then we'll move on with the committee reports, and we'll start to my right with Commissioner Brannon. The policy committee met on August 14th, and we conducted a hearing on the code of conduct and discussed the Lead Safe Schools proposal, the attendance policy 5000, and the parent involvement policy 1900. Um, Linda, you've just received the texts of resolutions 152 and 153, which deal with the cell phone policy and the code of ethics, which came up at the last meeting and which were inadvertently left out of the information you'd received earlier. Do you have them? Okay. And if there's any need to discuss them later, we can. Um, the next policy committee meeting will be September 13th. The Let's Safe the Schools proposal represents collaboration among community groups, district administration, and the board. Uh, this proposal was forwarded in your Friday packet in anticipation of the policy committee approving it, which it did. It calls for staff training, facility testing, and regular reports to the board. And it's been described, I think, accurately as a groundbreaking, um, a nationally groundbreaking policy regarding 
lead remediation in public schools. Um, re lead remediation has been addressed in many other avenues, but not in schools to this degree, and um, we may be making history here. And I want to just thank um, the Lead Coalition, uh, Derek Hazel, uh, Commissioner White, Commissioner Elliott, and Commissioner Powell in particular, and the district staff for the work they did sorting out this difficult issue. Um, they really um, performed heroically, as far as I'm concerned. And we ask that this proposal be discussed under new business and voted on in September. Uh, we have also referred to the policy committee and the referred this to the policy committee and the intergovernmental relations committee, as it pertains to facility modern facilities modernization as well. Um, discussion will continue on amendments to the proposed attendance policy. Chief among these is extending the policy to include elementary schools, uh, grades one through six. Um, and adding excessive tardiness is something that needs to be addressed. We've asked, that the super, we've asked the superintendent to review the administrative regulations that occupy the policy, and we'll discuss this issue at our September meeting as well. We are also looking into, uh, and this is long overdue, the, the parent involvement policy, 1900, and have asked the superintendent to provide a status report on site-based planning teams for our October meeting. And I think in, in plain English, um, this is often translated into um, the question that's been asked from this dais and in the audience. What is so difficult about conducting elections of parent representatives in processes where that's required? And we've been dealing with that year in and year out, and it hasn't been addressed. And I'm, I, for one, will be awaiting progress on that very anxiously. We had several speakers discuss the code of conduct. Um, we had some speakers address that tonight as well. And although timing requires this policy be voted on tonight, I want to make it clear that policy may be recommending amendments at a later date regarding input from the public hearing. And I, I would just point out that we had the discussion at the last meeting, and I hope we continue to have the discussion about the appropriateness or about the, what is, what constitutes proper and timely parental input and public input in, in addressing this. Um, there's no reason why this can't be done earlier as far as I'm concerned. And the amendment process um, and the policy committee will be addressing it. And I believe that's it. The next meeting is September 13th. The public is, is most welcome to attend and to a reasonable extent participate. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Elliott. Um, President Garcia, we um continued talking about uh, committee, board committee reconfiguration in reference to, you know, some of the committees that are standing now, should they continue, should we add more um, committees, and uh, um, we also discussed um, um, staff evaluation and also uh, the annual uh, evaluation tool of the superintendent. Uh, we are looking at scheduling uh, a retreat sometime in the near future to discuss um, these items. And I would uh, just point out and um, 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 bring to uh, your attention for the audience as well, I believe I could trust that in the calendar, the business meetings will now be scheduled for the fourth Thursday of uh, the month. And so please take note of that on your calendars that the meetings now <laughs> Reason for that is that it gives the district staff uh, hopefully sufficient time to respond to us uh, as board members to questions that we may have. Now, um, that's not to say that uh, all of those questions are going to be answered uh, outside of the public view, I don't believe. And um, um, I believe in some of the questions that I have to be answered in a um, public forum. But that certainly will give us enough time for some of the questions that take longer to respond to, to be uh, answered. And our next meeting is August 28th. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Evans. The Community and Intergovernmental Relations Committee is tentatively scheduled to meet um, Monday, August 27th. Okay. Commissioner Power. Thank you. The Finance Committee met on August 14th, and again uh, this evening before the business meeting began. Um, there's a significant number of amendments, or um, resolutions rather. Uh, resolutions 97 through 107 uh, have to do with facilities. Resolutions 108 and 109 are 
budget finance. They involve uh, the amendment of last year's, the, the final amendment to last year's budget uh, and reflect an increase in grant income that was appropriately spent. Resolutions 110 through 113 are procurement and supply. Resolution 114 is uh, an information technology resolution. And resolutions 115 through 147 include a variety of other uh, expenditures, um, I believe including uh, gifts. So um, we uh, had to reconvene tonight to address resolution 117. We had concerns over um, the, the nature of the lease. Uh, those concerns were resolved. We also learned that Resolution 120 was presented to us last week in error. And I move at this time that we pull Resolution 120 from the packet and do not consider it for a vote. What, what happened is in past years, the um, <coughs> ABC uh, daycare that was run out of Hart Street was utilizing facilities that the district was renting from its um, from its primary landlord, and we were subletting it. Um, they presented this, uh, the administration presented us a renewal of that lease agreement, um, failing to recognize that the new lease that was negotiated turned that space over to the landlord, so ABC will be rent renting directly from the landlord and not from us. So we shouldn't be taking action on that, and um, I move that we Poll, Resolution 120. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Question, President Garcia. Does that mean that uh, Resolution 149 is also removed since they're the same? We, no. we have 149, 120, 149, 123, and 124 have been poured. So you're saying that the Resolution 120 is not the same as Resolution it, 149? It is not the same one. Okay. But it's been pulled anyway. Oh. It was the same one? The memo from Dr. Calla explains that it's been pulled because it was a duplicate. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, we also need to move the June financial reports. Um, I, I move that the board uh, re accept the June financial reports. You've all seen them in your board. We need, we need a second for that. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? To say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, I believe that concludes my report. Um, ordinarily, we would meet uh, September 11th. I think I made it. Um, I think I created a conflict in terms of um, scheduling. So we may have. We may. We may or may not meet June um, September 11th. Um, also, um, my, uh, in my post as the chair of the Big Five, I want to encourage every member of this board to join us in at the NISPA, New York State School Boards Association um, c conference in New York City in October. There will be a, a full day devoted to the Big Five, and if you were able to attend, uh, that, that would be very helpful. We're scheduling an opportunity to talk directly with members of the uh, regents and also an opportunity to talk to people in the Department of Ed, um, Johanna. Um, Duncan Poitier. Duncan Poitier, thank you. Um, at, or, or one of her direct reports to talk to us about Big Five specific issues. So that concludes that report as well. Uh, yeah, we, we're taking that up on, on the new business. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Commissioner Thompson. The Quality Assurance Committee met on August 13th. We received a presentation on black English vernacular, also known as Ebonics. This is not something that is taught in district schools, and it is not used by all African American students. When appropriate, staff use BEV, or the student's home language as a compare and contrast tool that helps students develop skill in the use of standard English. One point that was emphasized 
was the need for teachers to be able to skillfully work with students who present with strong Ebonics. These culturally competent, excuse me, these culturally competent instructors are often better able to keep students constructively engaged rather than having the opposite effect, possibly causing students to pull away from school. Dr. Sianka and Ms. Holloway recommended that quality assurance members review the research on the Haberman Educational Foundation interview process in order to inform any input we might offer the administration as it relates to the hiring of culturally competent staff. We also heard an update on the African and African American Studies Department. If all goes as planned, a director may be in place by mid-September. We discussed with the administration that there should be a balance between adequate planning time and keeping this initiative moving. The amendment to policy 4350, multicultural education, will be subject to board approval tonight and will establish the African and African American Studies Department. QA asked Human Resources for an update on staffing for 2007-08, specifically new hires by race and gender. We received figures for teachers only, which was an inadequate response to the information request. Uh, to date, from the information we received, 78 new teachers have been hired. Of these, 19 are African American, 15 are Hispanic, and 43 are Caucasian. We're expecting hiring data for all staff at our next meeting in September, and we have been informed that a full report will also be provided to the board in October. Before I conclude my remarks, I'd like to, on behalf of the Quality Assurance Committee, publicly thank Dr. Marie Sianka for the support she's provided to the Quality Assurance Committee and <coughs> wish her well in her new endeavors. And uh, we will meet next on Monday, September 10th. At 6 p.m., our agenda, our agenda includes information on suspension and attention data for the 2006-07 school year and uh, diagnostic reading or DRA results for grades 3 through 6. That concludes my remarks. Thank you, Commissioner White. Audit Committee will meet on August 29th. We expect to discuss the Lead Safe Schools policy from a risk management standpoint. We will also discuss the role of the claims auditor and the relationship of that office to the board. That concludes the Audit Committee's report. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And then um, uh, we move on to the consideration of resolutions. Uh, the first resolutions will be 64 through 96. Those are human resources resolution. I'll entertain a motion to approve those, please. So Mr. Moved. President. Oh. Um, it's been properly second. No. Uh, it's just moved. Moved. Who moved? I moved. Oh, Tom, Tom Brennan moved. Is there a second? second. Uh, Commissioner White. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I had submitted questions in a timely manner, thanks to Commissioner Powell reminding me <laughs> that I need to do that. And, I, and again, I want to thank <laughs> district staff for providing timely answers. Um, I had a question uh, relating to resolution number 65. And they did provide an answer, but uh, it's, with, it's with, with respect to the Young Mothers Program. The question was, has the Young Mothers Program been evaluated? The answer to my question, I don't know if my colleagues have the uh, answers to the questions that I received, but it says, no, it has not been evaluated. And my question to the, uh, Mr. President, I'd ask that the superintendent address this. When will that program be evaluated? Commissioner, uh, Dr. Kala. Sounds like very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have another question, but I'll defer to you. No, go ahead. This relates to uh, go ahead. resolution number 78, Mr. President. I had also submitted a question respecting that uh, reading teachers, and I asked uh, the superintendent staff, uh, and the question was, if reading skills serve as a fundamental basis for learning, why have we eliminated one of the few remaining reading teachers that we have left in the district? This strikes me as inconsistent with uh, what I know the superintendent believes is the fundamental building blocks. Uh, the following question asks, how many reading teachers do we now have? And I was told three. I, I cannot imagine if we're having just three. This is a question, Mr. President. Um, if we have just three remaining reading teachers, why we would uh, downsize or eliminate the few teachers that we have that build the important building blocks for our students? Dr. Callum. Uh, 
You know, I'm not prepared to answer that uh, to that question because of the, the depth that that involves, but I can give you a, a history, my history with that, of, of uh, uh, making sure that all, all teachers are reading teachers. Uh, that's incredibly important that classroom teachers are, are reading teachers uh, and that we do teach reading. So uh, there, are, there are reading specialists and reading teachers. So uh, again, that's, that's a, a very uh, superficial answer without you know, knowing the, the history of the district and the history of the relationship of reading teachers to the classroom. So that's something that I'm going to have to look into. Now, one, one teacher in specific uh, mentioned once that there used to be 300 reading teachers in the district. And if we're down to three, uh, then something is going on there. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, I would ask uh, that uh, we excise that particular resolution from this uh, packet, allow Dr. Collip to provide us a comprehensive answer, and then maybe perhaps later on vote on this. Uh, make that into a motion if there's a second and, and everybody second. agrees. There is a second. Um, any, any questions regarding <laughs> Commissioner Power? Um, it, a procedural question. Are we tabling this until yes. next? The, That's the is, motion. The motion is to table which resolution? Resolution number 78. Number 78. Thank yes. you. Thank you. All in favor of tabling that resolution 78, please say aye. 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 Oppose? Me, I oppose. President Garcia? Yes. Um, I, 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 let me um, um, just sort of state from the outset, and you've heard me state this before, um, the configuration of these resolutions and how we're voting on them in blocks, um, I take exception to, uh, particularly when we have 71 pages of resolution. Uh, and I don't know what that amount is in terms of dollars and cents that we as the board have to um, be responsible for and do our due diligence. Having said that, uh, in reference to Resolution 84, there are some of uh, the um, requests I'm prepared to vote on, some I am not, don't want to vote on, um, and I, I'd ask this, I, I put this, and, and let me also say this, some of the resolutions um, that I will vote no on because of issues of integrity for me. Um, we're asking to approve these resolutions when uh, the work is already being done. And so I have a problem, ethical problem with that and an and, and, and issue for me, that's an issue of integrity, that the work would be done and after the fact, we're asking or during that time, we're asking to approve this. And so I would ask you to, to bear with me as I go through some of this, because it is going to take time. Um, some of these I'm not supporting. How, how do we do that, President Garcia? You're talking about Resolution 84. 84 uh, you just have to vote yes or no on 84. We can't break down 84 here in public. Well, we did it on some of the other resolutions in previous meetings. No, we, we, can, we can extract Resolution 84 and, and vote on it separately. Okay. We, we can do that. But you cannot vote on portions of 84. Uh, by the way, uh, Dr. Cal, as I understand from Resolution 84, uh, that pertains a lot to the summer programs. I think that's what Commissioner Lelio is referring. And as you know, the summer program started, and obviously we, we didn't know just the, the extent of the number of people who were going to be working on the summer program until we had the enrollment of the students. And it was based on the enrollment of the students that we agreed to hire the teachers. Therefore, that is why we're voting for teachers after the fact. It, it, the, the, the other option would have been for us not then to have that particular additional enroll, enrollment of, of students. But Dr. Kala opened the enrollment process up to the last day and then beyond uh, to make sure that as many students as possible benefited from the summer program. And I commend him for doing that because in the past we had a particular deadline if students were not signed up by that deadline they didn't get in. This time around we had a record number of enrollees and this, this is why this resolution is worded in that way, Commissioner Elliott. Yeah, there will be any number of resolutions that come after 
uh, of, of uh, occurrences that happen after the previous board meeting but before the next board meeting. And, and in the case of, of summer activities, this is often the case. And as uh, uh, Commissioner Garcia mentioned, we, extent, we, we uh, were not happy with the amount of kids that got enrolled in summer school. So we wanted, did not want to uh, keep that deadline and we extended the deadline right up until actually the second day of summer school, after summer school began. Now, of course, there is an option uh, for any of these if, if one uh, <clears throat> does not want to vote on these after the fact. You know, the, the other option is a, is a special board meeting. Uh, and that, you know, that's where, where that happens. Yeah, but I don't think it's necessary considering that everyone, everyone here knows uh, uh, and now Commissioner Elliott knows why this resolution is uh, stated as such. Well, let me give an example. On page 23 of Resolution 84, specific dates to be worked is July 5th. Well, that certainly could have come at the last board meeting. So why is it at the August board meeting? So those are the kinds of... It's the date that they start, but it's not necessarily the date that they're hired. Okay, that's why we need a personnel right. committee, so I can have these questions <laughs> answered. Well, I'll vote no on this one because it's just too convoluted. Uh, I have issues, uh, ethical issues with that. Commission and it's just too long. Commissioner Power. I just want to commend Dr. Kell on making a decision that clearly put the children first. Uh, if it puts us in a position where people uh, are um, being authorized to work by the board after they've already done the work, uh, I, I think that we've put our priorities right by putting the kids first. Well, one of the things I guess I would say is that we have a due diligence as this board to manage 600, almost $700 million as efficiently as we can. And, as, as, and I understand the value and the importance of putting children first. I love children myself, so that's not the issue per se. As much as it is, we have a financial responsibility to also make sure that what we're doing is ethical. Commissioner, That's all I'm saying. Commissioner Power. And I would respond by saying that we managed that responsibility when we passed a budget that included sufficient funds for some of summer school instruction. Thank you. Now, um, there's been. Um, I have questions. You have a question? Yes, I do. Go Thank ahead. You. For resolution number 81. Uh, we are approving retirements of individuals. However, one of the individuals is listed as leave, and I'm not sure how that jibes with a retirement. That's on uh, mm -hmm. page 11. Which, which one are we talking mm -hmm. oh, which, page which one is it? Uh, I'm trying to see in the new book. It's uh, resolution number 81. It's the second individual is listed as the third individual under education of children with disabilities is listed as on leave. Is the person on leave, or are they retiring? Uh, I, I can answer that. I, I just didn't know. I know the answer to that. That particular individual has been on leave prior to retirement as opposed to being assigned to a specific school. So he is retiring, but he's retiring from a leave rather than directly from a school assignment. Thank you. And Thank I you. Have Thank you. And I apologize that I didn't get my questions in in a timely way, but I don't think they're that lengthy. Um, resolution number 84, I believe it's page 17, perhaps, in the new book. No, it begins on 13, but the question okay. has to do with the, res the portion of that resolution that's on page 17. 17. The uh, ALWAS bullying prevention training. We have uh, trainers that are attending the GLSEN training. I'd like to request that we have the name and the number of sites that these trainers are working with and would appreciate finding out what the expansion plans are for the training across the district. And you will, it, it, Dr. Kelly can submit that information later. Would oh, that certainly. Be okay? Fine. certainly. And can then further your, along, uh, uh, Commissioner Thompson, oh, sorry, repeat your request so that I make sure I get that. Yes, we have uh, trainers that are going to attend. We have always bullying prevention uh -huh. trainers attending GLSEN training, uh -huh. and those trainers are already working with a number of sites across the district. Uh -huh. I'd like to know the names of those sites, the number of sites, and I'd also like to know what the expansion plans are.
for training across the district to other, other buildings, other sites. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, the resolution that we tabled was 65, is that correct? And I'm not finished. 84? Oh, you, you have one? Yeah. I Go have ahead. another, yes. Further along on page 19, we have the, uh, the pilot training for integration of schools with mental health. Mm -hmm. We have several schools, staff members from several schools that will be taking that training to put that pilot program in place. And I'm just not sure why we would have eight staff people from Shalott, one staff person from East, five people from Monroe, two from, three from school number two. If this is training to, to launch a pilot program, there's such a wide range of staff people from different buildings. I'm wondering if there's a reason for that. Is, is that question clear? It's yes. clear. Okay. Dr. Kala will provide a response. And I think finally, On page 29, the Promoting Alternative Thinking for Students. It's an in-service training for elementary and secondary special ed teachers. I apologize if we've received information on that program. And if we haven't, I would appreciate finding out what it is, the alternative, promoting alternative thinking for students. That's the last of my question for this portion of resolution. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Um, yes, President Garcia. Um, our, the salaries that we pay summer staff, is that separate from the annual salary? Meaning, do our teachers and, and those staff that support students and, and who work in the summer, are they paid on a nine-month basis or are they paid on a yearly basis? And this is additional income that they're receiving. Dr. Callum. It depends on which bargaining unit they're in. Some are paid on a, uh, on a, uh, a percentage of their salary, either a one three hundredth or a one two fifty. Some are paid uh, at an hourly rate. It's uh, all contractual. Okay. Um, and then in reference to, uh, oh boy. There was one question I had about what the CTE program is. So, um, Dr. Kale, if you can provide that information. Uh, Commissioner White. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a point of information. I, I believe you might have misspoken, but I want to make sure we're, the record is clear. It is Resolution number 78 that is being tabled, not 65. 78. I just, I didn't write the number down. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, okay, I guess we're now uh, ready to vote. We are voting for resolutions 70, 64 through 77 and 79 through 96. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of those in favor, well, I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to take a roll call for for my own reasoning. Uh, Commissioner Brennan. Yes. Commissioner Elliott. Um, resolutions uh, 64 through uh, 72, no. It doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the person. I just have a problem with the salaries that we're paying. Um, resolution 73, yes. Resolution 74, um, yes. Resolution 75, yes. Uh, resolution 76 and 77. Uh, resolution 76, yes. Uh, resolution 77, in reference to uh, one person under the secondary academic mathematics, um, I'm, I'm not in favor of us paying this salary for uh, a half time. Just, yes or no, Commissioner uh, Elliott? So, so you're saying for me to vote no on the whole resolution? Well, no, no we, we, I'm saying. If you if if you agree with 77, yes. If you don't agree, just vote no. Well, there's I agree in the majority, but part of this I don't agree with. Well, then vote no. No, for um, 77. 
uh, 78, 79 through 82, uh, yes, 83, yes, 84, no. Thank you. Do right, you still got? Yeah, I still have a few more. Eighty, I guess, eighty-five is no. Um, eighty-six, um, no. Eighty-seven, no. Eighty-eight through. An 89, no. Um, 90 and 91, no. Um, 92, um, yes. 93, 94 through 96, um, yes. Commissioner Evans? Commissioner Power? Yes. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. And I vote yes for all of them except for Resolution 84. I have to abstain because of a family member. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 97 through 107. So Excuse me. Thank you. Excuse Excuse me. Moved and second. I, any questions? I don't Commissioner? I voted on the last. Commissioner Bennett, I didn't hear. I, I, forgive me, I, I don't think I voted on the last item that we just, you? Yeah, you said yes. Yeah, you just said yes. He went to you first. You, you first. say yes. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> Reroll re the tape. <laughs> it was a long time ago, Tom. Okay, I did. <laughs> yeah. It just got lost, Dan. Yeah. Um, I have days like that, Tom. Uh, Is there a it's discussion been, between It's been moved and yes second. Any questions? Gotcha. I didn't get the second. Yeah. Okay. Who was the second? Oh, I, I seconded it. <laughs> yes. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Powell, for identifying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? No questions? All in oh, favor? Of course there are questions. <laughs> well, then. Are you kidding? Okay. Um, in reference to uh, Resolution 97, um, I know there was discussion in, in the um, finance, committee. finance committee about mm -hmm. the word language of it being approximately as mm -hmm. opposed to not to exceed. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, President Garcia, if I can refer to Commissioner Powell in reference to that Yes, language. definitely, Commissioner Powell, you mind answering that question? Yes, um, the explanation for this is that in the past we've um, contracted through a general contractor for this sort of service, and by doing that we paid that contractor uh, essentially a finder's fee because he would simply subcontract it down. By contracting directly with a carpeting uh, specialist, we're able to eliminate that that markup, but we haven't we haven't got a clear history of how much money we have spent on this type of purchase in the past. So this is a ballpark. Thank you. Um, in reference to um, Resolution 100, uh, I'm concerned that this seems to be the ninth hour that we're bringing this resolution. Any um, explanation in terms of uh, resolution um, 100. Um, this is the EPA? That's correct. Yeah. Um, the situation there is that we had, um, we had a grant at our disposal. Uh, we're one of several com um, government and community agencies that uh, shared a piece of this grant. We tried to do some solutions earlier in the year that would reduce the emissions from our diesel trucks. But unlike trucks that are long haul trucks that are running all the time, um, the usual solutions didn't work because our engines didn't get hot enough. So what this solution does is allows us to purchase essentially what, it, what amounts to catalytic converters for our diesel engines. Um, this, it is a, at the very last hour because the solution didn't really emerge until, um, until the grant period was nearly exhausted. Thank you. President Garcia. That's it. Commissioner Thompson. I just wanted to find out when we might expect to receive the little chart 
that will break out the, that will separate out the women versus people of color, business employees. We were going to have that chart included in these type resolutions going forward, I thought. Which, which one in particular? Well, none of them have it broken out. Oh, oh you're Beginning with resolution number 97. Oh, uh, Jim, are you able yeah, to they, they break that out. break that out any further than you've broken that out? <laughs> I see that 110 we have. I see there's a question yeah. mark on Jim's face. face. So yeah. that's, <laughs> I'm not sure you understand. Are you okay, understanding so the I question, see, so not Mr. All of them have it broken out. Only where there is a difference between women or person of color will it be broken out? Under the MWBE line, we put in, when it's a African-American, we put African-American only for the not the subcontractors. Right. If it's a woman, we put woman. Now, you want to put woman, <laughs> American, African-American? <laughs> no. For, so, for instance, number 97, resolution number 97, there's, there's no breakout. Because there's, there's no, no MWBEs there's no MWBE, there. Because, okay. So, there can't be. Okay. Right, okay. Well, that's why it says no all the way down. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay, okay. all in favor of uh, approving resolutions uh, 97 through 107, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, 97, I oppose. Is that it? And I vote aye. Yeah, I have it. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 108 and 109. So moved. Second. It's properly done and sec uh, uh, moved and second. Uh, are there any questions? All in favor of approving resolutions 108 and 109, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I entertain a motion to approve resolutions 110 through 113. So moved. It's second. been moved and second. Second. Okay. Um, any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, entertain motion to approve resolutions 114, formation technology. So moved. In book. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? All in favor of approving resolution 114, please say aye. 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 I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 115 through 151, and uh, Commissioner Brennan, I'm going to give you an opportunity to present resolutions 152 and 153 separately. Okay. Uh, 115 through 159, I'll entertain a motion to approve those, please. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Commissioner uh, White. Thank you. I presented a question, once again, thanks to district staff, including uh, Chief of Staff Kim dice Fawcett for uh, organizing these prompt answers. The question number nine related to the universal pre-kindergarten uh, uh, program that the district offers. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to ask the superintendent or have the superintendent indicate to us in that particular question, it indicates 2006, 2007, I don't know if you have the, my, my questions here, yeah, enrollment as of beds day. Yes. I'm a rookie at this. Uh, it says, is act, uh, it's in October. I don't know the exact date in October. But what, what is that? Beds? Oh, that's a basic Sorry. educational data system. It's the re, the, the re, uh, we have to uh, report our attendance to the state education department on that day. All right. So it says 1,684 children. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is the number of children enrolled in Universal? On that day. On that day. Right. And then what is the total 874 represent? That's for this year. Uh, Is that right? Let's see. So, well, it, yeah, that doesn't look right. Shirley, does that look? Can you help me on this? Thank you, uh, Dr. Kyle. The 874 is the number of children who happen to be enrolled as of yesterday when I ran a report of. of children who have enrolled since the beginning of July. And our goal is to have pretty close to 2,000 children um, by Bed's Day, by the 3rd of October. 
So you hope to exceed that uh, number from last year, 2006, 2007? Yes, I about do. About 300 or so. That's the plan. Uh, Dr. Kyla, uh, Ms. President, I wanted to acknowledge and thank Dr. Kyla for the commercials uh, uh, regarding or public service announcements regarding uh, universal pre-K enrollment. I'm hoping it has a desired impact and any money that was spent on those uh, commercials is money well spent. Thank you. Thank you. President Thank Garcia. You. Commissioner Elliott. Uh, I, I will vote in favor of uh, Resolution 115, but I will remind um, staff and the superintendent, I'd like to get this information prior to the date uh, that, in that we've already started this. It just It's an issue of integrity uh, and also on some level respect of, uh, of the board. Um, and in reference, respect to the board, uh, and in reference to uh, Resolution 121, I'm going to have to abstain uh, from that, um, from voting on that resolution. Well, you can, you can do so when it's your time to vote. Okay. And then uh, on Resolution 125, how many students do we have who are attending Bryan and Stratton College, um, doc, um, Dr. Kayla, and uh, oh, what grades are more. attending? It's 123. Uh, that's one, yeah, one, that's right. yeah, it must be a different resolution. 123. 123 you're talking about? Well, on my sheet is 125. Um, this is the one we got on Friday. Oh, okay. This is a reference to the Bryan and Stratton oh, yeah. College. Okay, because we pulled those resolutions. They all changed. So that's 123. Okay. Right. Okay. So you want to know how many kids? 123 has been pulled. Mm -hmm. Did we pull 123? And the grades? And the great, all of, okay, thank you. Um, it's but, a different 123. Questions? Because <laughs> we changed the numbers on okay. these things. So. <laughs> President Garcia. Uh, Commissioner Thompson. Yes, I have a couple of questions. Go ahead. The old resolution numbers 123 and 124 were pulled. Right. I'm curious as to why. Yeah. Uh, when we get contracts, I go through all the contracts every, every week at, to look at uh, uh, the value of them st uh, from you know, financial issues, what they're providing. And if I don't have enough information at, a, at, a, at the, a late date, I will pull them until I get that information. Because this, this is almost $200,000 worth of contract, and I didn't have enough information in order to sign those contracts. So I wanted to make sure that before I have put my signature on that and present that to you for a resolution that I have adequate information. So if I get that information by next time, it'll be on, it'll be on the next agenda. Okay. Okay. And I also had a question. Um, let's see, we have three policies that are, that are being offered for resolutions and approval from the board. What is the process for the resolution to get written because two of those policies had resolutions prepared for tonight. The uh, code of if if you if your committee was going to present uh, a resolution that have been um, uh, you that have been approved by the committee to forward it to the board, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Luby will be very happy to uh, to uh, prepare the resolution for you. Because only two out of three of the, of the policies had resolutions prepared for tonight. And I was wondering why the third policy. Mr. I, I'm, I'm almost sure that Mr. Brennan, uh, Commissioner Brennan requested uh, the, the two resolutions for his committee. Is that correct, Commissioner Brennan? Well, I came here this afternoon and these two resolutions were presented to me and it was, as I understood Sorry. it, and please, Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Luby. Um, the, the, ideally, they would have been in the resolutions packet, but weren't, and they were presented. Right. Um, for this purpose. Over the uh, over the, the last summer, this, as these things have come up, they've come up from di some different directions. We've got a, a richness of of, of source uh, over over the last periods. Uh, the policy uh, for the code of conduct, for example, which is an annual review. Uh, the first draft originates in my office, and I did, did a, at the time I did the draft and submitted it to the policy committee, I did it with a proposed resolution. So they went forward, and that's in the packet is 148. Uh, the other two came from uh, other directions, and uh, tonight when I looked, or this afternoon when I looked at the, uh, 
at, at, at the resolution package, I noticed that, the, that there wasn't one, although the policies themselves had gone through the policy committee, had come to the board last month, and, and were in there. So uh, seeing uh, this afternoon that there was that gap and there was not the technical uh, resolution that says we're adopting the policy, I uh, gave Commissioner uh, uh, Brennan quickly uh, the two, bo two boilerplate policy uh, resolutions to do that because of, of the board acts only by resolution. Right. So the, the substantive material has been before you. It's been under consideration. It came through the policy committee, uh, but it didn't come out in the old traditional source where it came up uh, the way that uh, this year's code of conduct did, which was wh where it started at my shop. Is it because you are, are you the liaison to policy? Is that why you were aware of those policies and not the policy that was coming, the amendment to the policy that was coming from QA? Because uh, I just wasn't sure why a resolution wasn't prepared for, for the African and African American Studies Department. I, I, do, I do not know who was working on that policy. My department was not. But. All right, I, I'll, I'll offer something from the floor. I just was curious as to the okay. process and where there may have been a, a hiccup. Good. Very helpful. Thank you. Shirley. President Garcia. Yes. Uh, in reference to Resolution 117, where we are asking to vote on um, a dollar amount of 14500 to Temple Bridge Codish for uh, professional development workshops on an ad as need basis, um, I'm, I guess I'm not willing to support this resolution because it's just not specific enough for me. What if we don't have any professional development workshops? Are we still paying? No money's no. paid. No, no. It's, 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 that's a maximum amount. If there is a need to go to that, to that uh, location, then the, uh, the, the, uh, that location is utilized. If, if it's not utilized, nothing is paid out. President Garcia. So when do we, uh, so when do we determine if Co that? Commissioner Power has a right. response uh, for you. This was the singular resolution that we discussed today before the business meeting started because we also at the, in the policy or in the finance committee did not feel we had enough information to take action but it was explained to us the uh, the rationale for using a site that was not one of our schools it included uh, access to adult size classrooms breakout spaces as well as auditoriums and adequate parking um, this, as described, would only be used on an as-needed basis, and it does have a ceiling, so there's a, there is an appropriate amount of money set aside in the budget for this, um, this sort of endeavor. It would complement uh, any number of professional development functions, including superintendent's days, um, in a, and support it in an off-site uh, opportunities. So the, the Finance Committee got the answers to the questions we raised and were satisfied enough to bring it to you today. Okay, any other questions? Just procedural. Procedure, go ahead. So it will be necessary for us to vote on this current set of resolutions and then we will hear from Commissioner Brennan for his two resolutions and then well, At that point, I may Commissioner offer from Brennan's, the Commissioner Brennan's resolution come under unfinished business. Mm -hmm. that, that will include multicultural. And then at that point... And I really don't have a great deal to say about them. Sure. Interesting. <laughs> okay, enough. thank you. That answers my question. If that's any help. Well, well, go ahead, Mr. Lewis. Commissioner, if I can uh, offer a, uh, a solution to that. The, uh, you. you you do have that situation in the in exact same posture as the other two, where where there were not resolutions that were prepared at the time. Uh, my suggestion uh, then is uh, when uh, number 153 is offered, which is the adoption of the cell phone policy, uh, then perhaps the best way to do it is to propose uh, a new number 154, which would simply be the adoption of the multicultural policy policy. Uh, not looking, seeing the number. Um, but, Four, but, 4350. 4350. Right. right, that's my plan. Um, it's just that we had received uh, the just got, Let's the just continue the numbers then. Right, when we had received that, paperwork up here that, for but, the other two. Okay, we'll rate the vote. Commissioner Brennan, how do you vote on resolutions 153 to one, 
115 through 151. Yes, and we won't be having a lengthy discussion about this, will we, after the... I've cast a vote. On, what, on, on the other two? <laughs> Never mind, just kidding. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And I'll try to remember this time. Commissioner <laughs> Power. Uh, Elliot. Um, 115, 116, 117, 115, 116, yes. Um, 117, no. Uh, 119, yes. 120. Uh, we're pulled, that's being pulled, correct? Am I right? I'm, that's correct. That's, that's being pulled. That's pulled. 121, I'm abstaining. Um, 120. Could you tell us the reason? Uh, because one of the agencies is the organization in which I'm employed. Thank you. Uh, Bless you. 122, yes. 123, yes. Uh, 124, 125, um, no. Um, 126. 124 has been pulled. Mm. Oh, it's, this is a different 124. Anyway, different. Model secondary schools, that's not one of the ones that's pulled. Oh, I see. They, 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 they were renumbered. 125, no. Um, we passed the question stage, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. 126, no. Oh, excuse me, yes. Uh, 127, um, yes. 128, no. Uh, 129, through... Uh, One uh, forty-four, yes. One forty-five. I will abstain because this is my place of employment. One forty-six, uh, yes. Um, One forty-seven, no. Am I to continue? Are we? Do I need to? One forty-eight. One one forty-nine. Okay. One fifty. One fifty-one. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Evans. Yes. Commissioner Power. Yes. Commissioner White. Yes. Commissioner Thompson, I'm sorry. No problem. Aye. Fine. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. Um, we'll move on then uh, to unfinished business. Uh, under unfinished business, we have uh, a cell phone policy and a code of ethics uh, policy 8332 for cell phone, policy 2160 for the Code of Ethics. Uh, we have an amendment to policy 4350, uh, which is up for approval, and that is going to be a resolution 153 and 154. One, 154. Yes. Uh, and then um, we just voted on the Code of Conduct. Yes, we did. So Never. we don't have to vote on the Code of Conduct, okay? Uh, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 152, which is uh, amendment to the District Court of Ethics, policy 2160. So, second. It's been moved and second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 153, which is the newly created cell phone policy, policy 8332. Is there a second? Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is second. there a second? Second. Any discussion? None. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. I vote aye. The ayes have it. Um, Commissioner Thompson, uh, you are we're going to entertain a motion to approve uh, Resolution 154. 
uh, which is an amendment to policy 4350 for multicultural education. Is there a second? Oh, you wait first. Is there so, a motion? So moved. Second. It's, it's been moved by Commissioner White and second by Commissioner Thompson. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Mr. President. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner White. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to, given the uh, resolution, we need to uh, appropriately give thanks to all those folks who uh, prepared for this particular uh, event and day. Uh, we need to recognize Dr. David Anderson, who for many years within these very walls tried to create a culture and an environment that acknowledged the African and African American experience. Now, now, undoubtedly, I will forget many people and was not blessed to know all folks who have uh, fought mightily to make this district more responsive to, the, to all people of color, but particularly African Americans. I, I should mention, only because he is a colleague of mine, uh, Minister Evans, uh, Malik's father, who also for many years mightily worked in the battlefields of trying to acknowledge the African and African American experience. And we ought to thank uh, ministers and preachers and people who have labored in the fields for many years so that our kids, white and black, could understand the wonderful traditions and culture of African Americans. Additionally, uh, there are other folks who in schools have been working on this issue for quite a long time. Leslie Hamilton Rose, uh, Michelle Hancock, who I believe is here this evening. Uh, we uh, owe them a great degree of gratitude and thanks. Additionally, while he is not with us any longer, Manny Rivera, who took it upon himself to offer up uh, Michelle Hancock and others so that a department could be planned even before the policy was in place. Now, now folks should not misconstrue my remarks, but in giving thanks to people, as I do at these meetings, I just do it because it's a truth. It's a fact. And the fact is, many, many months ago, Howard Eagle and Wallace Smith came to me and said, Mr. White, we don't have an African, African-American studies department. I have to acknowledge that they began an effort, which you see resulting today. So I have to give them their due and thanks as well. Tom Brennan who heads, of course, the policy committee, and Shirley Thompson uh, showed ex great leadership and management ability in moving this policy forward. Um, and finally, we need to thank the members of this community who, as uh, one speaker said earlier today, waited quite a long time for this very historic and important moment. And uh, I wish to uh, thank, lastly, my colleagues uh, who I anticipate will wholeheartedly endorse and embrace this policy. President Garcia. Commissioner Elliott. I, I would just, I don't know if uh, people are aware of this, but I just want to uh, uh, announce that one of the great Afrocentric scholars passed on, Dr. Asa Hilliard. Uh, for those of you who may not have been aware, uh, he passed away in uh, Egypt. They believe that he contracted malaria in Ghana, um, but he was where he, uh, uh, love the most, and that being on the African continent, so I would just pass that on. He's a great educator with respect to Afrocentric education, and so I'd just like to um, acknowledge that and present that. Thank you. No other comments or questions? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Want a personal privilege? Question of privilege, Commissioner Power. Um, because we already voted on the code of conduct, I, I missed my opportunity earlier to say that, uh, to add to the dialogue, which was that the policy committee spent a great deal of time talking about the timing of when uh, changes to the code of conduct should come before the committee and before the board so that we could get adequate parental involvement and community input. And, um, some of that dialogue included discussions about the timeliness of, of recertifying the code of conduct prior to its publication in the calendar, which would push the date for reconsidering it uh, into the spring of, uh, of each year instead of in late summer of each year. I, I hope that that is something that we can do. Uh, I think that it, it shows a responsiveness to our our constituencies 
and um, it also serves to provide the, the best, most current data to folks when we provide the single biggest piece of communication we put out to parents, which is our, our school calendar. So it's my hope that um, we can spend the next few months uh, working the, the parent community and, and uh, the broader community to get the help we need to review the calendar or review the code of conduct uh, in time for a spring presentation instead of a summer presentation. Thank you. I'll entertain, I'll entertain a motion to extend the board meeting since it's past 8.30. So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And we will continue until we conclude uh, the agenda. President Garcia. Commissioner Brown. I'd like to just briefly respond to Commissioner Powell's remarks, which I very much appreciate. And I have to confess that I've been sitting up here this evening and, and, and didn't really decide until a few moments ago whether I would even vote for the Code of Conduct. Uh -huh. um, and, I, and I decided I should because there's, a, there's an obligation we have as a body to meet a deadline. But I appreciate and take very seriously the concerns that people in the community have raised and I think people on the policy committee and on the board have voiced that we need to have a process that's more timely. Had, had seven board members come up here and voted against the Code of Conduct, that would have been irresponsible. So. So that's why I didn't do it. But the concern is, is extremely valid and important. And sometimes it's the little things that we do that convey to people that their input and their involvement is welcome, that just makes all the difference in the world. And it's easy for us to miss these things sometimes. And it's helpful when they're called to our attention. I don't think there's any purposeful intent to exclude anybody here. I think it's a classic case of something slipping through the cracks. But it's been a good discussion, and I hope that we'll act on it in the future. Thank you. Um, I, um, I'd like to appoint um, Commissioner uh, Elliott to the Finance Committee, and I'd like to reappoint Commissioner Brennan to the Quality Assurance. Uh, and I will entertain a motion from the board to uh, ratify those reappointments. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So. Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner Elliott. President Garcia. I just want to, um, um, to publicly thank um, Commissioners um, Thompson and White um, for, um, for, and for my participation on the QA committee. Um, I hope that I uh, lent um, uh, some information that was useful in, uh, in, in um, terms of quality assurance, in terms of student achievement and all of those things. So, and I just wanted to thank you all for uh, um, your work and, and um, allow me to be on that committee. Uh, and also, I'm looking forward to working on the finance committee and hopefully that I'll be able to lend uh, something uh, to the finance committee, so I'm looking forward to working on that committee. Thank, Thank you. you. President Garcia. Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Garcia, just briefly, and as I expressed at the Finance Committee meeting, I wanted to thank um, Commissioner Powell and Commissioner Evans and all of the staff on the Finance Committee. It's been terrific working with them. I do think it's pretty clear what's happened here. Cynthia and I are swapping committee assignments, and I do think she brings a great deal to the Finance Committee. She has displayed an extraordinary amount of interest in these resolutions at this meeting tonight. And this is a good example, I think, maybe of board members just cooperating a little more with one another. She has a level of interest in the business of the Finance Committee. I'm certainly interested in quality assurance and, and learning more about that. And this is, uh, will be an opportunity for her, I think, to perhaps sink her teeth in those, into those areas that she has such a great deal of interest in a little earlier. And that will help the business of the board and, and, and help the the quality of the work of the Finance Committee, and I wish her well and congratulate her. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, the other... President Garcia. Yes, Commissioner Thompson. I just wanted to repeat my thanks to the contributions that Commissioner Elliott has made at the Quality Assurance Committee table. Um, as I said the other night, finances gain is our loss. Um, although I won't miss what I anticipate will be shorter meetings. 
a QA. <laughs> don't don't count on it, Shirley. <laughs> that, that, that tell me what I should expect. <laughs> You're gonna miss me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, the, next, the next item has something to do with a presentation Dr. Kala made under his report, and in that, that is regarding the meetings, the statewide meetings. Uh, and it just so happens that, that that convention is taking place October 25th, which is the oh. date of our board meeting. So if any of the commissioners are planning to attend uh, the convention, uh, then we may have to change the date of the next of the October board meeting. Um, Commissioner uh, President Garcia, I, 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 in listening to uh, Commissioner Powell and uh, Superintendent Kayla, it appears that um, we are encouraged to attend um, the meeting uh, in New York. I was not going to attend, but after listening to Commissioner Powell and uh, Superintendent uh, Kayla uh, may want to attend. So um, maybe we need to um, have that meeting to be, say, the third Thursday of the month, if, if people so are interested in attending. If, if, if we are all in agreement, then we'll change the October board meeting to the third Thursday rather than the fourth Thursday, uh, could, Commissioner could Powell. I, if, could I offer a different alternative? A different alternative. A, a Tuesday? By all means. The issue, keeping in mind that the concept of shifting these dates is in keeping with the business cycle, and if we move it a full week, uh, we are going to interfere with the finance committee schedule and how it um, uh, approves the, the resolutions, but perhaps earlier the same week, perhaps a Tuesday night, um, could accomplish the mission. I think that's usually board governance meeting night. Well, board governance can reschedule. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you see, we're very that, that, I, I would just note that that's also the Rochester Education Foundation's annual dinner, uh, Tuesday, October 23rd. Um, so I, I think this is something that we may need to sort out. And so it, we, will, we will hold the board with, and with some dates, and, uh, and then we will just announce it based on the result of the polling. That way we won't have to agree to it right here. Okay. Thank you. Or, um, I have one, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Levins. Uh, while we're in the, uh, in the business of thanking people, there's someone that I want to thank that has given a tremendous amount of service to this district um, as interim chief financial officer, uh, Jim Coney, a gentleman who I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Um, when Daryl Porter uh, was president, he appointed me to get the Office of Auditor General off the ground, and Jim Coney was absolutely instrumental in helping us develop the charter and get that office um, off the ground and then shifted over uh, to um, as the interim um, superintendent. As I'm sure folks have read, Vince Carfagna will be joining us um, in September. But I wanted to take this opportunity to thank um, Jim for his extensive knowledge um, and experience in this position. And I hope that he will um, continue to come back and see us um, <laughs> on, on a regular basis. I, I feel like Rochester is uh, kind of your, 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 your second home. So thank you so much for all your service that you've given. We're moving on. That, that concludes the business portion of our meeting. We're moving on now to speakers. Before we do that, if yeah, I can, Dr. If I can Keller, of course. We, we, we do have uh, some of our uh, appointed administrators. There are appointed administrators uh, this evening. See, I learned. It, uh, it, I'm slow, but I get it. Uh, I, I, if, if you're, I, I know you're not all here, but I, want, I do want to mention that you know, t tonight we appointed Ruby Smith McClendon to uh, the assistant director of Young Mothers. If your family is here, please have them stand up as well. Uh, Dr. Beverly Pringle has been appointed to be the principal of East High School. I know you're out there, Beverly. Yay. Uh, Rosemarie Urzetta as the assistant director of early childhood. That's Rosemarie. Uh, James Palermo is assistant principal for school number two. Uh, Carmen Bermudez Murner as assistant principal for school number 12. 
Tanya Wilson is Coordinating Administrator of Special Education, Northeast and Northwest College Prep High School at Douglas Campus. Long name. <laughs> Mark Davis for Assistant Principal for Jefferson High School. Marion Whitfield. Marion Whitfield is Assistant Principal at Nathaniel Rochester. Susan Clark, Academy Director at John Marshall. And also not here, uh, Carl Kania, Academy Director at, at Monroe High School. And that's it. We're moving on to speakers on other than agenda items. And we have uh, some speakers. And I, I'll make the same plea to all of you, please. Uh, when you hear the bell sound, uh, you, you conclude your remarks so that we won't have to uh, interrupt you. Uh, the first speaker is uh, Mr. Kerry Coleman. Good evening. Good evening. I want to start out by saying I'm, again, a true believer that our schools are a reflection of our society. And this, this question is to Dr. Callum. As a parent, as a taxpayer, and with a child in the district, why is it that every time I ask to speak with you or speak to someone representing you, I have this man, Mike Luby, running interference? I pay taxes. I have a daughter. I got legitimate gripes, all right? 46 charges here made by your chief of staff here. All of them were illegal since 2001. I've won my arbitration. I've been illegally fired. The state has deemed that. I've been ostracized. I had cops sitting in front of my house because of what she said. That was a lie. You tell me, what's wrong? Where's, where's the democracy in this? OK? As I told Mike Luby before, and I truly believe this, and I'm not saying this because I'm an African American and he's, he's, he's a Caucasian, but I truly believe this man is a bigot. And I'm not saying it because of what he's done to me and my family, but let's say two words, David Heil, all right? Let's talk about the contracts that he's done behind the board to you individuals here, that he's snuck in behind the board. What about the, the, the news articles from the Democrat Chronicle, from the, 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 the deals he's making on the table amongst behind you guys' backs? Why is he still here? Why is he still here? At $147,000 a year, every type of misconduct has been named here and he's still here. Same thing with your chief of staff. Our parents are being ostracized here, sir. All right? The parents that truly are, that knows the wisdom of what's going on here are basically being ostracized. But I'm gonna let you know right here in your face, Mike Luby, not until my last breath will I give up, okay? You're the prime example of my ancestors, my father, my grandfather have been fighting against, and you hide behind the letter of the law. You had a judge. Judge Renzi said the same thing to you. You're playing legal gymnastics with our children, OK? Legal gymnastics. I don't consider my daughter no better than any other parent's kid here. But you know what? They're our future. And there's people out here in this audience, parents and staff members, that's going to fight. No matter what you do, no matter what she does, OK? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Thank you. Mr. Ron Ring. Uh, good evening, school board members. Good evening, audience. My name is Ron Ring. I'm currently living in an apartment building for many of us who are disabled. I do lobbying in local government offices about every two or three weeks for peace, particularly peace in Iraq and for ending poverty in Rochester. Um, student involvement in formulating curriculum including some courses I'm going to list, would help bring about more peacefulness in the schools and 
after school, in families, and in later life. World peace, resolve, conflict peacefully. This would lead to more involvement in the United Nations for our U.S. nation. Arms control. The Cold War and arms race is fortunately over. So there's a lot of basis for spending more on housing, health care, food programs for us poor people. Affordable housing, public works program, daycare and health care, single payer health care insurance, less expensive. Education, more teaching, peace and love, spiritual love, sister and brother love, and humanitarian spirit. And cooperative economics would be a good way to help bring about less expensive goods and services through the right and the left working together to work out patterns of distribution better for all of us. And we need to protest for peace, or at least suggest that peace is reasonable in the Middle East, in Iraq, the Sudan, Colombia, and elsewhere. We could teach ecology how to protect the environment, peaceful process, conversation, dialogue, debate, negotiation, and arbitration, and research problems more. And we synthesize opposing views is a good way to help bring peace, that people could work out their differences in a good, peaceful way. And rational reason to think out answers to problems more peacefully. And peacemakers have set an example, Mahatma Gandhi and Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. These people have solved problems for masses of people in a good, peaceful way. They set a good example. And we need to protest Rossi to pursue peace studies instead and to um, help take some of the violence out of sports. Peace moving people. You can go to school. Okay, should be allowed in the schools for more favor, more toward equal time. Uh, religion Thank. could be included. M Mr. Ring, will you conclude, please? Yes, I'm doing, yeah. Religion could be included if it was an elective, something more interfaith. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks for listening. Mr. Glennie Williams. those who don't know it. Her name is Reggie Brown. Reggie Brown. She was a biology teacher at Madison High School in 1963 when Glennie was fat but shorter and younger. Uh, and she started the first black history course and one of the first black history courses in Rochester City School District. But they made us do it after school because they thought it wasn't appropriate at the time. So I just want, because when we talk about people like Dr. Anderson, great person, we need to talk about uh, Reggie Brown. She's still around. Uh, I think she still even teaches part time. But tonight we're here to talk about moving on and trying to engage this district in working with the parents of the district. And so you all have received an invitation to come to CAFE on the 25th of August. Only a few of you have signed up to come. I'm here again tonight to ask you to come. We need to have a conversation, as this board commissioner over here said, a continued conversation where we do not simply talk at each other like this meeting. We talk for two minutes, and most of you dismiss us, and then we listen to you. And I got to admit, like I saw somebody go to sleep, one of the commissioners tonight, 
Sometimes I go to sleep with these sort of talk at each other meetings. So we're inviting you again to come out on the 25th and join us in a conversation, in an exchange where we can work together and design stuff that works for our kids. Let me make just two points for you uh, about that. We really think when, when we see that you, we're a district in corrective action, and when the plan comes out, and we really believe, we talk to a lot of parents, most parents don't even know what it is. I tried to get to look at it up on your district site. Finally, this week it is up there. But again, it is done so poorly uh, in terms of being available to parents to understand parent friendly. We've got to start, when we do policies and design major initiatives like that, they've got to be talked about in a way that parents can work with them and understand them. Two, another initiative that you're working on, uh, that we helped AQE, uh, which I want my colleague to tell you about, uh, to, to you remember, we helped uh, get a major amount of money, millions of dollars, you know this year, uh, Superintendent, we helped make that happen. We've helped work with Senator Robot and some other people to make that money happen here in Rochester. And then you put together a plan, and we don't even know about what the plan is. Those are the kind of things that we are trying to work with you on the 25th so that we talk with each other. Because yeah. when we work, go to Albany. Will, will you conclude? Yeah, I know you're going to tell me. When we work with you and go to Albany and help you get major money, we'd like to be able to also come back and help develop the changes to make it happen. Thank you. We'll hand out a letter. I won't even, we won't even read it to you, so to save some time. That we will look forward to each one of you commissioners coming on the 25th and having the continued dialogue with parents. Please come, because that's the only way that we can have successful things and not have find out things by slippers. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Is going to happen or come. Thank you. Uh, please. Uh, you can... You can give me a couple of extra seconds. No, I, everybody oh, you, you, everybody you, you gets per minute. You can't sit up here and try to talk over me, but I'm great at talking over people. So <laughs> you can do that if you like. Or you can take a minute and just listen to me for a minute. Mr. Mr. Gary I Thompson. Will, I will guarantee you, you won't out talk me, and you won't talk over me. So if you give me a minute, we'll all be done, and we can all go Mr. Home. Gary I Thompson. Uh, so anyway, thank you for that time to please come. We really want to work with you because there are kids and we want them to learn. Thank you. And we'll be seeing you on the 25th of New York. Oh, that's okay. You got to express yourself when necessary. We believe in that. Good evening. My name is Gary Thompson. I'm the president of the local chapter of the NAACP. And our concern this evening is with the selection process of our superintendent. The local chapter and the community of Rochester, New York, are outraged at the flawed process that's being used in choosing a superintendent for the Rochester City School District. We strongly be believe that the process is closed to the public for political maneuvering of a specific candidate and that the process was rushed to cover that political maneuver. Therefore, the local chapter is demanding that we start the search process all over again to include community residents and identified leaders within our community. This close process concept makes us as residents believe that there are side deals going on within, within the decision. Therefore, what the NAACP is saying, we're firmly stating that if there's any evidence of side deals during this process, we would immediately launch a federal investigation. Our, our interim superintendent, Dr. William Keller, has agreed to stay on as long as, as, long as it takes to find the, the best possible person. Therefore, there's no rush for an immediate decision. Dr. Keller has made several systematic changes within the organization and has received high praises in the community for his work, and that was demonstrated earlier. Therefore, we are in support of extending the stay of Dr. Keller while the appropriate and legitimate search continues. Our children are our most precious commodity. Therefore, we are responsible for, for protecting their quality of education and ensuring that the best possible person is leading that charge. Again, the local chapter would like a fair chance for our children in this district, and therefore, we're demanding that a new search begin for our superintendent for the city school district.
Thank you. Vicky Govia. Dr. Kella, President Garcia, members of the board. <clears throat> I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you for the selection of such an outstanding interim superintendent. Dr. Kella, in just a few short months, has demonstrated for us what true leadership is all about. He's a no-nonsense sort of guy who understands that children really do come first. For Dr. Kalla, children first is not just a popular overused phrase, but a core belief. As you move forward to the selection of a permanent superintendent, I want to thank you for your eventual understanding that a public process is necessary. Any candidate worthy of being named the superintendent of the Rochester City School District should not be afraid of a public process. This community cares too much about the education of our young people not to be involved in the process. Given the fact that Dr. Kalla has established such a positive working relationship with so many groups in such a short period of time, I would hope that you would look to, the, look to the candidate to possess many of the same qualities as Dr. Kalla. These, some of these would include, but not be limited to, their leadership ability, knowledge of curriculum and instruction, understanding of, and support for early childhood education. With a long-term investment in this community, Ability to you to work collaboratively with a wide variety of stakeholders. In understanding the importance and history of collaboration in the Rochester City School District. They must possess an understanding that building relationships with students is a critical component of student success. Without the building of relationships, student achievement will not improve. In closing, I want to thank you for understanding the need for this community to be heard. We must be a collective voice for our children. They deserve only the best, and an open process will help to ensure a positive outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next board meeting will be September 27 at 6.30 p.m. Um, if you need information, please come contact, uh, see the district website. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So move. Second. Everybody, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Meeting is adjourned.